welcome to the American Academy of Optometry's Foundation's Clinical Podcast Series, brought to you by the TBI Channel. Today's topic, Optometric Brain Injury Curriculum and Federal Residency Training Programs, a Consensus Report. Today's host and topical editor is Phil Juhas, and the topical expert is Thomas Urosevich. Now on with the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third installation of our American Academy of Optometry Foundation podcast on traumatic brain injury. Today, I have a real treat for you. I have Dr. Thomas Urosevich. Dr. Urosevich is a staff optometrist and executive council member at the Eye Institute, Geisinger Health System. He is also an assistant professor of optometry in the Surgery Institute, Geisinger Commonwealth School of Medicine. He graduated with a doctor of optometry degree with clinical honors from the Pennsylvania College of Optometry and completed his residency at The Ohio State University. Additionally, he holds a master of science degree in physiological optics. His background has encompassed the clinical practice of ocular disease management, teaching and research in institutional settings and private practice settings and academic settings. Dr. Yurosevich retired from the U.S. Army Reserve with the rank of Lieutenant Colonel and his last assignment to the Vision Sciences Branch, Century Research Division, U.S. Army Aeromedical Research Laboratory. That's pretty impressive there. He is a fellow of the American Academy of Optometry and is board certified by the American Board of Certification in Medical Optometry with active membership in the American Academy of, of Optometry, which, of course, we love the American Optometric Association, the Armed Forces Optometric Society, and the Association of Military Surgeons of the United States. He and his family reside in Mountaintop, Pennsylvania, and he holds appointed positions in local government. And we're very honored for Dr. Rosevich to be here with us today. Today, we are discussing a paper that is titled, as I open it up here, Optomic Brain Injury Curriculum in Federal Residency Training Programs, a consensus report. This paper was published in the Journal of Military Medicine, and it's a recent paper. It was published in the spring of 2023. So first of all, I'm going to kick it off off to Dr. Yurosevich for a summary of the paper, and then we'll ask him some questions about it. Okay, thank you, Dr. Yuhas. And first of all, I want to thank you for the opportunity to come on board and join you for this afternoon. Um, this is a very interesting journal article. Uh, Dr. Jackson and his team, they've advanced a core curriculum to guide our efforts for consistency in brain injury optometric residency programs, which there is, we currently do not have that. This is an effort by a focus group, a very distinguished focus group. They're all subject matter experts. And what they've done is embraced Kern's curriculum developmental model, which is used to develop medical curricula. And they want to provide a framework for optometric education for diagnosis, management, as well as rehabilitation of patients with any visual sequela from brain injury. Now, most brain injury optometric residents are in federal clinics. Therefore, their consensus curriculum is initially intended for the application in veterans administrations, as well as DOD optometric residency programs. Perfect. Well, that's 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 a great summary. So I guess if we zoom out a little bit, why is there this need to have a brain injury specific curriculum in the first place? I mean, what's what's the impetus for this uh, the need that this this paper filled? Uh, Dr. Yuhas, if you look at the Department of Defense, they have reported more than 470,000 U.S. service members worldwide that have been diagnosed with a traumatic brain injury. And this is for the period of 2000 to 2022, fourth quarter, and the importance, therefore, of brain injury rehabilitation to include all the visual sequela that goes with it cannot be understated. There are currently 23 current brain injury vision rehabilitation residencies, and 61% of them are housed in the federal programs. So as a consequence of that, there needs to be some degree of consistency in all programs deliveries for the basic knowledge and skills for brain injury rehabilitation. So then what makes TBI so difficult to manage in the clinic as to necessitate an advanced training curriculum to diagnose and and to manage it? With all forms of traumatic brain injury, it's very common to have any type of visual sequela 
that either impedes a active duty military member from returning to duty status, as well as normal functioning for our veteran population. We know that nearly 70% of our sensory processing in the brain is vision related. And out of the 12 cranial nerves that we have, seven of them are utilized by the visual system. Given that, we have neurological deficits that might lead to visual impairment within the system. So it's not surprising that patients with brain trauma are typically going to present with a whole myriad of visual dysfunctions. Common problems that we find with TBI presentations, pupillary response deficits, visual processing delays, photosensitivity, impaired ocular motor convergence, as well as other related ocular motor reading dysfunctions. Dysfunctions, excuse me. So the optometric clinician, especially those that are in non-military or VA facilities who encounter veterans, need to be aware of all the visual sequelae of a traumatic brain injury. Um, the aim is to uncover these visual dysfunctions and other associated comorbidities. You've dealt with a lot of traumatic brain injury in your own practice. You deal with a lot of veterans, especially. So drawing upon your experience in the clinic, your extensive experience in the clinic, what do you feel are the strengths of the proposed curriculum that Dr. Jackson uh, laid out? If we look at the participants in the study, they're all subject matter experts in brain injury as well as rehabilitation. The group's mainly composed of optometrists, but there are other disciplines that are also represented. You have neuro-ophthalmology, occupational therapy, as well as internal medicine. And this great group got together. They employed Kern's six-step process. Once again, as we said earlier, that's a standard method for curriculum development within medicine. And using current clinical recommendations, they came up with a very high-level curriculum. And this is able to, in my opinion, able to fit all optometric brain injury residencies. Do you think there are any weaknesses in this curriculum or areas that you wish it had addressed but didn't? Not that they could not address because the problem that we have, this being a relatively new subspecialty, there's a lack of evidence-based practice. So without those findings, you're not able to develop a full comprehensive program, but they did a great job with what they have to work with. Do you think this curriculum could be expanded to non-federal residency programs? I mean, do you think there's well, that, that possibility? Well, that presents, that's, that opens up a whole different Pandora's box here. Uh, we know accreditation council and optometric, optometric education. Uh, that's the only accrediting body for optometric residency programs for the U.S. as well as Canada. Now, any curriculum has to be structured, integrated with an educational plan, they got to meet mission. They got to have goals. They got to have objectives through patient care. There have to be didactic components as well as your scholarly activities that go with that. Not all the institutions that host a residency program are going to have the same resources. They're not going to have the same facilities and they're not going to have the patient opportunities to meet those specific requirements. So that's a very difficult nut to try to crack when we go to all the different schools outside of the federal programs. So then. Considering the federal programs themselves, especially the VA residencies, do you think that all the ocular disease VA residencies out there should incorporate at least some element of traumatic brain injury training in terms of diagnosis and management? Absolutely. No doubt about that. We know that traumatic brain injuries not only link to visual impairment uh, beyond the acute state of injury, but we also have long-term chronic manifest uh, and symptoms. And remember... Post-deployment service members, National Guard members, reserve members, IMAs, they may not be in a VA clinical facility uh, because of employer-provided health care, geographic locations, other considerations. So uh, there are opportunities to get into the VA system uh, are few and far between. They've got mental challenges, physical challenges, as well as visual after suffering a TBI. So every clinician out there, ocular disease and otherwise, with routine eye exams, ocular disease assessments, they have to have awareness of these subtle and subclinical visual dysfunctions, and that go as a consequence of TBI. You're going to have them unrecognized if you don't have some specialized knowledge base. So that was a long answer to a really <laughs> a short question. The short answer is yes, absolutely. We really should incorporate that. And I think that this framework that has been provided, that's a great starting point uh, for everyone to go forward with.
Great answer. I'll get you out on this this last question. I didn't script this one for you, so this is a nice surprise. So um, for our colleagues who are treating traumatic brain injury in the clinic, you deal uh, with this a lot in your own clinic. What piece of advice, if you had one, to give uh, a practitioner who's either new to practice, just graduated, or maybe who doesn't deal with TBI on a routine basis but wants to start? Any piece of advice? Uh, the history, we need to start with the history. That's most important. If the patient is a veteran, we need to establish that. And we need to establish wartime service, but also training. Those that did not serve in a theater of war have been exposed to mild TBI in their training. Um, aside from the history, if they are not veterans, we look at the football players, all sports, contact sports, and some non-contact sports. So starting with the history is a great place to go. And then do your binocular vision workups, always. I know some of our colleagues sometimes kind of breeze through the binocular vision workups. And I think we're doing a great disservice to the veteran population, as well as uh, sports-minded folks. Uh, so thanks for asking that. That's, that's, that's a good question. So we're out of time today. Thank you for your time, Dr. Rosevich. You had great insight into this article and into the care of our traumatic brain injury patients. Uh, we appreciate your being here and wish you luck in the future. Thank you, Dr. Yuhas. Okay, goodbye, everyone. Thanks for joining us today.